Now the second and another important kind of reaction of Wigner reagent will be reaction with carbonyl compounds. Now acids, carbonyl compounds are those compounds having carbonyl group, and this C double bond O group. This group is called carbonyl group. Now on both side either you can have a hydrogen or alkyl group. So if you have one hydrogen on at least one side. Then that will be called as aldehyde, and if you have R group on both the sides, and that is that is called ketone. So this is a ketone, and this is a aldehyde. We'll see this group in the chapter carbonyl compound in great detail. For time being, this functional group is called al ketones. The one having C double bond O and having R on both sides of C double bond O that is termed as ketone, irrespective of what that R is. Irrespective of whether that R is open chain or a closed chain, aliphatic, aromatic, saturated, unsaturated, that is called as ketone. And similarly, if you have a hydrogen on at least one side of C double bond O, that is called aldehyde. Now here we have to study of reaction of carbon of Grignard reagent on these carbonyl groups. Now looking at carbonyl groups, you must be able to identify that this this bond, the bond between carbon and oxygen, is a polar bond. The reason being that there's a huge difference between electronegativity of carbon and oxygen oxygen being the second most electronegative element carbon being the least electronegative element together with hydrogen so uh, due to the electronegativity difference due to electronegativity difference the electron will be more shifted towards oxygen so oxygen will have a del negative charge and carbon will have a del positive charge and remember the problem of grignard reagent the problem is in Grignard reagent you have a negative charge on carbon that is a problem the problem is because carbon cannot hold negative charge because it is not electronegative element it is not a big size element so it has to discharge its charge when it comes to carbonyl group the first thing that it does is it search for a active hydrogen and in ca in carbonyl compounds and ketones and aldehydes you cannot found any you cannot find any active hydrogen because hydrogen is not attached with electronegative atom hydrogen is attached with carbon and in these R groups also you have hydrogen attached with carbon so there cannot be any acid base reaction but still Grignard reagent has to dislodge its electron so the other way around is it has to put its electron in someone's anti-bonding or bonding orbital now this carbon seems to be like seems to be electron deficient and even and indeed it is electron deficient so this carbon has a tendency of gaining electron from some outer source but the problem is this carbon is not deficient of complete one electron because this carbon does not have deficient a uh, plus one unit of charge it has a del plus charge so it is deficient of certain electron density and Grignard reagent will offer one complete electron Grignard reagent cannot offer partial electron or a fraction of electron so in order to gain one complete electron this carbon must create a develop or develop a deficiency of one complete electron so the mechanism of reaction what actually happens is electronic density start getting transferred to this carbon now when electronic density will start to get transferred to this carbon this carbon will have a electronic density more than that corresponding to 8 electron so what this carbon will do it will start losing some of the electron from the bond pair so certain electronic density will start to shift from R- minus to carbon and simultaneously some electronic density will start shifting from oxygen to oxygen so what effectively will happen is as electronic density will sh start shifting from R- minus, this the negative charge density on R will start to decrease as electronic sh density will start shifting on oxygen the negative charge density on oxygen will start to increase so gradually the charge on this carbon will decrease and the charge on this oxygen will increase and that will be very favorable for us or for the molecule because the negative charge on oxygen is much more stable than that of carbon because oxygen is second most electronegative element of periodic table after fluorine so this will stabilize the system and eventually whole of the R- minus will get transferred to carbon forming a RC bond and whole of this electronic density of this pi bond will get shifted on oxygen so what 
we will get is we will have this this pi bond will get broken the electronic density will go into the orbital of oxygen for that reason this oxygen is having O minus this R minus the negative charge on this R because of one extra electron will get transferred to this carbon this carbon being C plus after removal of electron will become C dot this R minus after removal of the electron will become R dot forming a bond between R and C now this will not become R dot or C dot things will happen simultaneously gradually certain electronic density will start to move into the orbital of carbon carbon will gradually increase electronic density in its orbital simultaneously some of the electronic density will move into oxygen so gradually you are having a bond formation between R and C at the same time this bond is being broken between C and O so the, by the time this bond will be completely formed between R and C this bond will be completely broken between C and O so this carbon is not having a charge of plus one at any moment because the because uh, when the electronic density from the CO bond is being moved towards oxygen simultaneously you have a supply of oxygen of supply of electron from this R minus so this is how the reaction proceeds and this is how my system has been stabilized and this is the driving force for the reaction now we have discussed this very slowly and gradually but this reaction happens very very fast because R minus is hugely unstable it is highly unstable it has to decrease its unstability and when this reaction proceeds in this path the stability is increased because a negative charge from the carbon has come to oxygen so this is, this is the reaction although C double bond is very stable it is thermodynamically very stable it is the strongest bond of organic chemistry but still because R minus is much more unstable than what C double bond is stable if the reaction goes in forward direction although we have broken C double bond but at the same time we have also removed the charge from carbon so overall there is a stability in the system so C double bond will have to break and the bond will be formed between C and R and <coughs> the, this negative charge will remain on this O minus until we add H plus from outer source when we do it when we add H plus after the reaction is over because we cannot add H plus before if we do that Grignard reagent will react with H plus instead of this carbonyl group so whenever you have a reaction with these nucleophilic compounds like Grignard reagent you don't add H plus in the beginning of the reaction you allow the reaction to be completed by your substrate and at the end of the reaction you add H plus to neutralize whatever anion you have got out of the reaction so this will be the final product I am sorry it has to be hydrogen here so this will be the neutral hydrogen with neutral alcohol formed as a result of reaction of Grignard reagent with ketone or aldehyde for that matter so when you are having a reaction with Grignard reagent these carbonyl compounds will turn into alcohol So suppose I have acetone, I have acetone, I have propanone and I want to convert this into tertiary butanol. Then the structure of tertiary butanol is this and someone asks me to convert acetone to butanol then I would look for, now whenever this happens, whenever you have a reduction from ketone to alcohol you must think of the reaction of Grignard reagent and you must observe the structure these three carbon being the same as in acetone and we are having this methyl group being added here so you must think of a Grignard reagent in which the R minus will be methyl anion so if I add CH3MGX then MGX is not going to do anything the CH3 the CH3 having negative charge will attack on this ketone resulting in butoxide ion resulting in ion of tertiary butanol so 
first I will add Grignard reagent and then I will add H plus from the outer source to neutralize whatever substrate finally I get. Now whenever we write it like this, number 1 Grignard reagent and number 2 H plus that means they are not being added simultaneously. When number 1 completes its reaction then number 2 is added. So that's the sense of writing this 1 and 2. Now the third kind of reaction of Grignard reagent will be another important reaction with acid derivatives. Now those of you who are not well aware of the, what this acid derivative is, then let's first of all see what this acid derivative is. Now acid means carboxylic acid in, carbo in organic chemistry. In organic chemistry carboxylic acid is referred as acid and um, this is carboxylic acid and this is what we say acid in organic. Now acid has an active hydrogen. The pH value of this acid is between 4 and 5. So generally they are weak acid. They are not very strong acid like inorganic acids like HCl or HCSFO. But they are fairly acidic for most of the salts. And when you remove this OH with some other group like, like NH2, like Cl, like OET, like O, OCS3, then you get acid derivative. If you replace OH by NH2, you'll have amide. If you replace Cl, OH by Cl, you have acyl chloride. If you replace OH by OAT, you'll have ester, not ester. And when you replace OH by this group, you'll have acid anhydride. So these are the acid derivatives. There's a chapter called acids and acid derivatives that we have to deal with later in the future. So we'll see the preparation and reactions of all these kind of acid derivatives again. But for here, we'll see the reaction of this acid and acid derivative with Grignard reagent.